as you all know that uh, proteins are necessary macronutrient of food that supply essential as well as non essential amino acids needed for the growth repair and maintenance of tissues protein is obtained from a variety of sources to supply amino acids for growth and repair humans are unable to synthesize nine amino acids out of the 20 found in proteins non essential amino acids are synthesized from essential amino acids in the body the daily requirement of protein about 65 and 50 grams in food by males and females provided about 10% to 15% of total energy in a balanced diet only about 5% of body energy comes from the catabolism of protein under normal circumstances protein is the most stiting of macronutrients mainly for the people with a low habitual protein diet it may influence the body weight reduced fat conditions increasing protein intake may be helpful for controlling weight for some individual but the role of the protein content in the diet is probably not an important determinant of the prevalence of obesity now we look at malnutrition and protein energy malnutrition the world health organization defines defines the malnutrition as the cellular imbalance between the supply of nutrients and energy and the body's demand for them to ensure growth maintenance and specific functions the term protein energy malnutrition applies to a group of related disorders that include marasmus hwashorkar and intermediate states of the marasmus and hwashorkar in energy malnutrition is composed of a spectrum of biological disorders caused by the lack of food despite the name which is the protein energy malnutrition it is not necessary for the affected individuals to be experiencing a lack of protein but rather a deficiency of total energy dietary proteins that would normally be used for tissue repair or growth are also used as fuel protein energy malnutrition is rare in the developed world and is generally associated with children suffering from neglect or solitary malnourished elderly patients the severity and clinical features of the pem indicate food deficiency in the forms of marasmus and hwashorkar pem becomes life threatening when susceptibility to infectious diseases increase that would not normally be lethal when people are deprived of protein energy or both the result is protein energy malnutrition pm touches many adult lives it most strikes early in childhood it is uh, one of the most prevalent and devastating forms of malnutrition in the world affecting over 500 million children most of the 33000 children who die each year each year and each day are malnourished inadequate food intake leads to the poor growth in children and to weight loss and wasting in adults children who are thin for their heights may be suffering from the acute pem which is the recent severe food deprivation whereas children 
who are short for their age have experienced chronic PEM, which is long term food deprivation. Poor growth due to PEM is easy to overlook because a small child may look quite normal, but it is the most common sign of malnutrition. PEM is most prevalent in Africa, Central America, South America, Middle East, and East and Southern Asia. Homeless people and those living in the substandard housing in inner cities and rural areas have been diagnosed with PEM. In addition to those living in poverty, elder individuals who live alone and adults who are addicted to drugs and alcohols are frequently victim of protein energy malnutrition. Protein energy malnutrition develops in young children when parents mistakenly provide health food beverages that lack the adequate energy or protein instead of milk, most commonly because of nutritional ignorance, perceived milk intolerance or food fetish. Adult protein energy malnutrition is also seen in the people hospitalized with intolerance and with infections such as AIDS or tuberculosis. These infections deplete the body proteins, demand extra energy, induce nutrient losses and alter metabolic pathway. Poor nutrient intake during the hospitalization worsens the malnutrition and impairs recovery. Whereas nutrition interventions of uh, improve the body's response to other treatments and the chances of survival. PM is also common in those suffering from the eating disorders, anorexia nervosa. Prevention emphasizes the frequent nutrient dense, energy dense meals and equally important resolutions of the underlying causes of the PEM, poverty, infection, and illness occurs in two forms, marasmus and khashorka, which differ in their clinical features, uh, is a form of protein energy malnutrition occurring chiefly among very young children in developing countries, particularly under famine conditions in which mother's milk supply is greatly reduced. Marasmus result from the inadequate intake of both protein and calories. Persons with a similar type of protein energy malnutrition, Hwashorkar, do not obtain enough protein but still consume a moderate number of calories. Marasmus is characterized by growth retardation and progressive wasting of subcutaneous fat and muscles. Other symptoms may include diarrhea, dehydration, behavioral changes, dry, brittle hair, loose skin. Marasmus can be treated with a high calorie, protein rich diet. Severe prolonged marasmus may result in permanent mental retardation and impaired growth. And Hwashorkar, also called protein malnutrition, condition caused by severe protein deficiency. Hwashiorkar is most often encountered in developing countries in which the diet is high in starch and low in proteins. It is common in young children weaned to a diet consisting chiefly of cereals, grains, sweet potatoes or similar starchy foods. The condition in children was first described in 1932.
the term khushurkar means deposed child deposed from the mother's breast by a newborn sibling in one african dialect and red boy in another dialect the later terms come from the reddish orange discoloration of the hair that is characteristics of the disease other symptoms include dry skin and skin rash pot belly and edema weakness nervous irritability anemia digestive disturbances such as diarrhea and fatty infiltration of the liver in addition to the protein deficient diet other causes of khushurkar include poor intestinal absorption chronic alcoholism kidney diseases and infection burns or other trauma resulting in the abnormal loss of body protein protein malnutrition is associated with deficiencies of one or more other nutrients and of calories when the caloric intake is inadequate and the level of dietary proteins is barely adequate protein malnutrition may still develop for some of the protein is metabolized to supply the body's energy need marasmus is a severe form of malnutrition specifically protein energy undernutrition it results from an overall lack of calories marasmus is a deficiency of all macronutrients carbohydrates fats and proteins if you have marasmus you lack the fuel necessary to maintain normal body functions people with marasmus are visibly depleted severely underweight and emaciated children may be stunted in size and development prolonged marasmus leads to the starvation marasmus and khushyorkar uh, are two different variations of severe protein energy undernutrition marasmus is a deficiency of all macronutrients while khushyorkar is a deficiency in protein predominantly khushyorkar occurs in people who may have access to carbohydrate bread grains or starches but lack protein in their diet marasmus has a wasted and shriveled appearance while khushyorkar is known for causing edema swelling with fluid especially in the belly and the face marasmus can affect anyone who lack overall nutrition but it particularly affects children especially infants who require more calories to support their growing bodies it is more common in developing countries with world spread poverty and food scarcity and few parasites and infectious infectious diseases may contribute to calorie depletion in the developed world elderly people in nursing homes and hospitals or who live alone with few resources are more at risk when the body is deprived of energy from food it begins to feed on its own tissues first adipose tissues which is the body fat and then muscles it also begins shutting down some of its function to conserve energy cardiac activity slows down causing low heart rate low blood pressure and low body temperature this leads to heart failure in some cases the immune system is also compromised making undernourished people more prone to infection and illness and slow to recover children with chronic marasmus will not have the physical resources to grow and develop as they should they may be stunted in size or have 
developmental delays or intellectual disabilities. These effects can be lasting even in the children who receive treatment. Parts of the digestive system also begin to atrophy from the lack of use. This means that even when people do have food to eat, they might not be able to absorb nutrition from their food effectively. Marasmus can lead to food aversion. What are the main uh, causes of marasmus? The main causes of uh, affecting all ages include poverty and food scarcity, wasting diseases such as AIDS, infections that cause the chronic diarrhea, anorexia. Additional causes affecting the children include inadequate breastfeeding or early weaning of infants, child abuse and neglection of child. Additional causes affecting the adults include dementia and elder abuse and neglection. What may be the external signs of uh, marasmus, which may be visible wasting of fat and muscle, prominent skeleton, head appears large for the body, face may appear old and wizened, dry loose skin, dry brittle hair or hair loss, sunken fontanelles in infants, lethargy, apathy and weakness, weight loss of more than 40% BMI should be below 16. What other symptoms and complication can marasmus cause, which may be dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, low blood pressure, slow heart rate, low body temperature and uh, gastrointestinal malabsorption, stunted growth, developmental delays, anemia, osteomalacia or uh, rickets. How is marasmus uh, diagnosed? Healthcare providers will begin by physically examining the person's body. Marasmus has some telltale physical features. The primary one being the visible wasting of fat and muscles. People with marasmus appear emaciated. The loss of fat and muscles under the skin may cause the skin to hang loose in folds. Beyond appearances, healthcare providers will measure the height or length of the person's body and the circumferences of their upper arm. Healthcare provided uses a few different charts to measure a child's or adult weight to height ratio against medical standards depending on their age. Marasmus is defined differently on different charts, but it is always significantly below average. The use occurred more people are familiar with. Marasmus would score below 16 on the BMI. The purpose of the scoring is mostly to confirm the diagnosis and rate how severe it is. Diagnosis primarily relies on the body measurements, which are then scored according to the different scoring systems for children and adults. Upper arm circumferences and height to weight ratios help the healthcare providers rate the severity of undernutrition. Height to age ratio help define growth delays as children. Healthcare providers will usually recognize the type of undernutrition based on the physical signs. The next step will be to take a blood test to identify the secondary effects of marasmus including specific vitamin, mineral, enzymes, and electrolyte deficiencies. This will help determine the child's or adult's nutritional needs for refeeding. A total complete blood count can also help reveal any infections or disease that may have contributed to or resulted from Rasmus. 
they may lack or check a stool sample for parasites, infection will need to be treated separately. People in treatment for marasmus are at risk of free feeding syndrome, a life threatening complication that can result when the undernourished body tries to reboot too fast. For this reason, rehabilitation happens in stages. People with marasmus should be treated in a hospital setting under close medical supervision. Healthcare providers who can train to anticipate and recognize refeeding syndrome can help prevent or correct it by supplementing missing electrolytes and micronutrients. The first stage of treatment is focused on treating dehydration electrolyte imbalances and micronutrient deficiencies to prepare the body for refeeding. In many cases, these can all be treated with one formula, rehydration solution for malnutrition given orally or through a nasogastric tube. It also important to keep the person's form to prevent hypothermia and to treat infections which compromise their meager energy resources. Depending on the individual, it may take several hours to days before they are considered stable enough to begin refeeding. Refeeding begins slowly with liquid formulas that carefully balance the carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Foreign patients, healthcare providers, prefer the tube feeding because it allows for gradual but continuous nutrition. Calories are introduced at about 70% of normal recommended values for the person's age. They may increase to 140% of recommended values to meet the growth requirement of stunted children. This phase may last 2-6 to six weeks during this time period Patients gradually progress to more ordinary oral feeding with solid foods. Since marasmus can recur, a complete treatment protocol includes education and outgo outgoing support for the patient or their caregiver before they are discharged. In the developing world, this may mean breastfeeding support safe drinking water and food preparation guidelines, immunizations and education to prevent white spread diseases. In the developed world, caregivers may need guidance on how to recognize signs of malnutrition in those they care for. The malnutrition universal screening tool can help identify the people at risk. Your own community you can help prevent the marasmus by advocating for the needs of children and elders who may be unable to advocate for themselves, especially those living in hospitals and care homes. In the global community, preventing the marasmus means fighting poverty, eliminating food deserts, improving nutritional education, controlling white separate infection diseases, improving sanitation in developing countries, improving elder care in developed countries. Shiorkar Kwashiorkar, also known as edematous malnutrition. Because of its association with edema, which is the fluid retention, is a nutritional disorder most often seen in the regions experiencing the famine. It is a form of malnutrition caused by a lack of protein in the diet. People who have Hoshiorkar typically have an extremely emaciated appearance in all body parts except their ankles, feet and belly, which swell with fluid. Hoshiorkar is rarely found in United States and other countries with a generally steady food supply. It's most common in Africa, Asia, 
and other countries where people routinely have a limited supply of food. Most people who are affected by the Khoshur curve recover fully if they are treated early. Treatment involves introducing extra calories and protein into the diet. Children who develop Hoshiorka may not grow or develop properly and may remain stunted for the rest of their lives. There can be serious complications when treatment is delayed, including coma, shock, and permanent mental and physical disabilities. Hoshiorka can be life threatening if it's left untreated. It can cause major organ failure and eventually death. Hoshiorkal is caused by a lack of protein in the diet. Every cell in your body contains protein. You need protein in your diet for your body to repair cells and make new cells. A healthy human body regenerates cells in this way constantly. Protein is also especially important for the growing during the childhood and pregnancy. If the body lacks protein, growth and normal body functions will begin to shut down and Hoshorkar may develop. Hoshorkar is most common in countries where there is a limited supply or lack of food. A limited supply or lack of food is common in these countries during the times of famine caused by the natural disasters such as droughts or floods or political unrest. A lack of nutritional knowledge and regional dependencies on low protein diets can also cause the people to develop this condition. This condition is rare in the countries where most people have access to enough food and are able to eat adequate amounts of protein. Worker is uh, rare in developed countries, but it mostly found in the developing countries with high rates of poverty and uh, food scarcity. Poor sanitary conditions and a high prevalence of infectious diseases also help set the stage of the malnutrition. Kwashiorka can affect all the ages but it's common in children especially between the age of 3 to 5. This is an age when many children have recently transitioned from breastfeeding to a less adequate diet. One higher in carbohydrates but lower in protein and other nutrients. What are the signs and symptoms of the Hoshiorka? Edema is the distinguished features of the Hoshiorka, which is the swelling with fluid, especially in the ankles and the feet, blotted stomach and ascites, dry, brittle hair, hair loss and loss of pigments in the hair, dermatitis, which is the dry, peeling skin, scaly patches or red patches, enlarged liver, are symptoms of fatty liver disease, depleted muscle mass but retained subcutaneous fat under the skin, dehydration, loss of appetite, irritability and fatigue, stunted growth in children. What are maybe the other complications can Hoshiorkar causes, which include the hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is the low blood sugar. Hypothermia, which is low body temperature. Hypovolemia, which is low blood volume. And electrolyte imbalances resulting from dehydration. Immune system failure causing the frequent infections and slow wound healing. Cirrhosis of the liver and liver failure, atrophy of the pancreas leading to the digestive difficulties, atrophy of the gastrointestinal mucosa, possibly leading to the small intestine bacterial overgrowth, growth and developmental delays in children, starvation and death. 
protein deficiency is the main feature of the kwashu worker and many researchers believe it's the cause but not all are convinced some have noted cases where dietary protein fail to prevent or improve the kwashu worker this suggests that protein deficiency may only be part of the picture the primary factors associated with the kwashu worker are diet of mostly carbohydrates in the population that are considered high risk particularly poorer regions of africa central america and asia the only available food is a type of carbohydrate which is rice corn or starchy vegetables these crops tend to be cheaper and more abundant than protein rich foods especially in the rural areas where many are farmers mothers who are protein deprived may pass their deficiency on to other children weaning with inadequate food replacement may be the other factor the name khoshyorkar comes from the ghanian language which is the africa means the sickness the baby gets when the new baby comes This describes a common condition in which a nursing toddler is rapidly weaned so that a new baby can begin breastfeeding due to a scarcity of the resources or ignorance of the nutrition or both. The weaning toddler does not receive an um, adequate replacement diet and their nutrition deteriorates. Other factors that may contribute include lack of essential vitamins and minerals lack of dietary antioxidants aflatoxin which is the toxin from a mold that commonly grows on crops in hot and humid climates parasites and infectious diseases particularly measles malaria and hiv significant life stress including the famine deprivation war and natural disasters Healthcare providers can often diagnose khoshyorkar by physical examining the child and observing its telltale physical signs. They will ask about the child's diet and history of illness or infections. They may measure the child's weight to height ratio and height to age and score them according to various charts. The weight to height score tells them how severe the child's condition is their height to age score tells them how much the child's growth has been affected by the malnutrition the world health organization has outlined 10 steps to follow when treating severe undernutrition hypoglycemia can occur when calories are introduced The rehydration formula for malnourished people includes glucose to help restore balance. It's given incrementally during the first hours of treatment. Malnourished bodies have trouble regulating their own temperature, so they must be kept warm. A special formula called Rizomal rehydration solution for malnutrition is given to treat dehydration in khoshwarkar it's designed to restore and maintain the body's fluid and sodium balance it can be given orally or through a tube electrolyte imbalances can have serious and even life threatening effects especially when a malnourished person begins refeeding healthcare providers try to address these first usually in their rehydration formula with the diminished immune system that comes with the khoshyor kar all infections are serious threats to recovery infections are treated with antibiotics specific vitamins and mineral deficiencies can have serious effects if they are severe enough healthcare providers try to correct these before refitting undernourished bodies have altered metabolism refitting with trigger their metabolism to change again 
but if this happened too fast it can cause life threatening complications feeding begins slowly under close observation protein should be reintroduced gradually in kwashiorkor once the child has stabilized and appears to be tolerating he feeding well their calories can increase to up to 140% of the recommended values for their age the who provides ready to made liquid formulas that can be given orally or by tube if necessary this is the nutritional rehabilitation stage of the treatment it may last up to 6 weeks children with a uh, kwashiorkor may have been in a state of apathy for some time their malnutrition may have uh, stunted their intellectual neurological and social development stimulating their development to reboot is part of their treatment plan before discharging the child from care healthcare providers offer education and counseling to the mother regarding nutrition breastfeeding food and water hygiene and disease prevention they may provide immunizations as necessary if possible they should help secure access to a consistent nutritious food supply how we prevent the khushwarkar first is education some population simply are not uh, informed of basic nutrition the benefits of breastfeeding or the nutritional needs of the children and mother the who and other organizations are working to reintroduce native crops that offer the sources of protein and micronutrients in affected countries they have developed nutritional formulas made from locally available resources such as skim milk and peanuts white spread disease and infections weaken the immunity of the high risk population diseased bodies require more nutritional resources and could shed calories through chronic diarrhea disease also deplete our community's material resources breeding poverty improved sanitation and immunizations can go a long way toward the preventing malnutrition left untreated kwashiorkor can be fatal death may be caused by the infection dehydration or liver failure when treatment begins people are also at high risk of complication from refeeding syndrome those who are successfully rehabilitated can make a strong recovery they may have some lingering effects from the kwashiorkor but they may not the complications of kwashiorkor are more severe and last longer the longer they have been left untreated some children may never fully recover from their growth and development shortages they may remain predisposed to liver disease and pancreatic insufficiency earlier interventions lead to better outcomes the combination of marasmus and kwashiorkor is characterized by the edema of kwashiorkor with the wasting of marasmus most often the child is suffering the effects of both malnutrition and infection some researchers believe that kwashiorkor and marasmus are two stages of the same disease they point out that kwashiorkor and marasmus often exist side by side in the same community where children consume the same diet they note that a child who has marasmus can later develop kwashiorkor some research is indicates that marasmus represents the body's adaptation to starvation and that kwashiorkor develops when adaptation fails in protein energy malnutrition antibodies to fight off invading the bacteria are degraded to provide amino acids for other uses leaving the malnourished child vulnerable to infections blood proteins including hemoglobin 
are no longer synthesized. So the child become anemic and weak. Dysentery, which is an infection of the digestive tract, cause diarrhea, further depleting the body of nutrients. In the marasmic child, once infection set in, Kwashiorkor often follows and the immune response weakens further. The combination of infection, fever, fluid imbalances and anemia often leads to the heart failure and occasionally sudden death. Infections combined with malnutrition are responsible for two-thirds of the deaths of young children in developing countries. Measles, which might make a healthy child sick for a week or two, kills a child with PEM within two or three days. If PEM caught in time, the life of a starving child may be saved and uh, with the nutrition intervention. Diarrhea will have incurred dramatic fluid and mineral losses that will require the careful correction to help raise the blood pressure and strengthen the heartbeat. After the first 24 to 48 hours, protein and food energy may be given in small quantities, with intakes gradually increased as tolerated. Severely malnourished people, especially those with the edema, recover better with an initial diet that is relatively low in protein, 10% kilocalories from the protein. We possess the knowledge, technology, and resources to end hunger. Programs that tailor the interventions to the local people and involve them in the process of identifying the problems and devising solutions have the most success. To win the war on hunger, those who have the food, technology, and resources must make fighting hunger a priority. Good nutrition is apparent when a child is getting enough food in quality and quantity. Some strategies can be employed to counteract the malnutrition, which is the proper education. Basic education is a prerequisite to child nutrition and care. Advocacy should be done for equal chances of education for both boys and girls to make better parents. Separating knowledge on nutrition and child health in schools, families, communities should be done to improve on attitudes and practices with emphasis on proper nutrition in the most vulnerable groups that is the mother and children. Sensitizations of communities on the importance of adequate intake of nutritional supplements availability and easy access to safe and adequate water for drinking, cooking and cleaning. Safe disposal of waste like using washrooms and proper disposal of refuse. Prevention of low birth rates and prematurity through the adequate antenatal care for safe motherhood. Proper nutrition and supplementation preparation for the successful breastfeeding, deworming, and non-alcoholic abuse. Prevention of intrauterine infections such as malaria and HIV infection through the community sanitization. Proper antenatal care, for example, conducting the safe delivery and care for the newborn. Promotion of exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of age and complementary feeding after six months. At the same time, continuing to breastfeed at least up to two years. Breastfeeding of children born of HIV positive mothers should be done according to HIV infant feeding guidelines. Promotion of special nutrition care for the sick children. Family sizes, all children are more likely to receive enough attention and food if the family is small. Modern family planning methods should be encouraged as to have quality families or children. Younger children need to be accorded more care. If both parents are away, efforts should be made to give children enough food and attention by the caretaker. 
distribution of money work and food within the family should be equitable pregnant mothers and growing children need more high quality energy and protein foods for their increased body demands children need this food in small portions frequently because they can't digest large quantities of food at once care for children from the broken incomplete or underprivileged family should be done through the social integration and communal care allocation of money and other resources for the agriculture improvement education and health create the conditions for assessing land for cultivation and growing of enough food clearing of land at the right time planting of the right and different seeds and weeding should be ensured if one is to get optimal in value harvest communication and harvesting at the right time and proper handling of a harvest through the storage processing and preparation so that nutrients are preserved and there is enough food in time or hunger creation of job for those who do not have access to land so that they can have income to purchase food food distribution at household levels should be equitable giving children and pregnant mothers priority prevention and treatment of prenatal infections of mother and babies especially hiv immunization against vaccine preventable disease like measles tuberculosis and whooping cough which contribute to malnutrition in children emphasis on growth promotion and monitoring activities using the child growth curve and initiate remedial measures for faulty growth early detection and effective treatment of acute disease like diarrhea and acute respiratory tract infection can be used to prevent or control malnutrition child with severe protein energy malnutrition should be identified and referred to appropriate referral nutrition rehabilitation centers for expert management